Let's turn in our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. And I'll invite Donna to come and read God's word for us this morning. Six ten to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given, on, given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Thank you, Donna, for reading God's word for us this morning. Let's pray before we sing these words together. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time we have to study your word and to draw closer to you through your word. We pray, Lord God, that you open our ears to hear from you, open our eyes to see you, and give us the courage to put into practice what you teach us this morning. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. This morning we're we'll resume our series on the armor of God and, and specifically spiritual warfare as well. And this morning we're looking at the helmet of salvation. I remember when I was in my college days, I was actually at a point where I wasn't quite looking into being a pastor yet um, because I wasn't ready. I was doing college. But I realized that I needed to work with youth because at that time I thought God was calling me to be a, a worship pastor, a music pastor. But I knew that most churches hired some th someone to do youth or worship in addition to something else. And so I thought, well, what else could I do? And so I thought, maybe youth ministry. But I had no experience with youth. So I thought, well, maybe I should volunteer at my church and help out with youth ministry. So I did that. And I remember one activity that our youth pastor took us to, as I was a youth leader, was to go to Camp Warwa. I don't know if you've ever been there. But these, they have these high ropes course. And there's kind of like a team building type of activities on these high ropes. And, uh, but before we could go up, we had to have our safety equipment, we had to have our safety harnesses on, and they gave us a bucket. Seems strange, doesn't it? This kind of bucket we called a brain bucket. Do you have an idea what it is now? It's a helmet. We jokingly call a, 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 a helmet a brain bucket uh, because if you fall down, it's supposed to protect your brain, right? Keep your brains where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Today we're looking at the helmet of salvation. It's, it's kind of like a brain bucket. It's kind of an odd way of saying it, isn't it? Uh, but it's, the helmet is something that is used to protect the head in warfare. And as we look at the same idea as it relates to salvation, the helmet of salvation is something that God has given us to put on and to never take off. Now, I've said in several of the sermons so far in this series on the armor of God that 
we should never take off the armor of God. But there's been some well-meaning people who have said that every morning put on the armor of God. And uh, I don't think they mean that you take the armor of God off at night. Um, I was reminded recently by my wife of someone who, um, someone who's passed away that we highly respected though, and she would say often every morning that put on the armor of God. And I think the intention was is that pray and remember that God has given you the armor of God. So go in that day in the armor of God. And yes, don't take out the armor of God. But every morning, maybe it is a good thing for us to pray and remind us the armor that God has given us. This helmet, though, the helmet of salvation, is something that we should have on at all times. And so there's one point for us to look at this morning, and that is this. Is this not working? That's why. The switch is off. So the point this morning is this, to keep the helmet of salvation on. Um, we, we sometimes hear the phrase, people ask the question, is it possible to lose our salvation? Well, Calvinists believe that, no, you can't lose your salvation, and Arminians believe that you can lose your salvation. So which is it? It's actually somewhere in the middle. We cannot truly lose our salvation but what can happen is we can choose to walk away from our salvation. That means to give it up. It doesn't mean that one moment because I, oh, because I've sinned a moment ago that I've lost my salvation. No, not at all. When you've sinned as a Christian, you haven't lost your salvation. Um, do we need to repent of that sin? Yes, we need to repent of it still. But we haven't lost our salvation. Can we lose our salvation? No. Can we walk away from it? Yes. There are some who in the past have said they were Christians, but then walked away from God and became atheists. Can we say that they weren't Christians before? Well, I don't, that say we, I don't that we can or can't say that they weren't Christians before. Only God knows. But God's word tells us to continue to grow in faith, to not walk away from our faith, to persevere in the faith. Why would God's word tell us to persevere in the faith if it's not possible for us to walk away? That's why it's important for us to, for us to keep on the helmet of salvation God has given us this helmet to keep on and for some important reasons this morning. In ancient times, like in the Roman Empire, helmets were used in warfare often and were used as a tool to protect a part of the body. What part of the body is that? Your head, right. Because if you lose your head in war, that's the end of it, isn't it? Sure, there may be certain cuts and lacerations that happen, but those can be repaired somewhat. But if you lose your head in war, that's the end of it. So God uses this analogy, the, God gives this analogy to the Apostle Paul to have a helmet as a form of salvation to protect us. Protect what specifically? Our minds. Again, in ancient times, the helmet was used to protect the head. And actually, there's a description I found from uh, a commentary. And it says this about the helmet. The meaning is the helmet, which is salvation, the protection of the head. The helmet was originally of skin, strengthened with bronze or other metal, and surmounted with a figure adorned with a, hair, a horse hair chest, or crest, sorry, it was fur furnished with a visor to protect the face. So, sorry I don't have a picture, but you might remember some pictures or maybe you've seen a, a movie of the, from the past. It had a soldier wearing a helmet. Um, maybe if you've watched Risen, uh, there's a movie called Risen or The Passion of the Christ, you would have seen soldiers with these helmets with a horse hair and a crest. But some of them actually would have a visor that would cover their face too, to protect the face. That was the whole point of the helmet, was to protect the whole head. Because again, that's where the brain is. That's, you can't live without a brain. Because the brain, we understand, controls your entire body. Which is interesting too and important because our minds need to be protected. Because our minds is where we do our reasoning, it's where we think. 
It's also where we seek for understanding. When we don't understand something, we have to think about it. We have to read and study about the topic and try to understand it from our own minds. So the helmet of salvation is important because God wants to protect our minds. So then why salvation? Well, in our passage this morning, the word salvation is the Greek word soterios, which means to be saved or delivered from something or even preserving. Uh, a secondary expl explanation of this is the grace of God has appeared, or also means deliverance. So what is God delivering us from us from? Any ideas? God delivers us from what? Eternity in hell, right. Which is our destination if we don't confess to Jesus what? Our sins. Right, our sins. So Jesus his salvation is to deliver us from our sins and the consequences of it and eternity in hell. And so God wants to protect our mind then too with truth. So salvation is believing his word, coming to faith in him, and believing his word and studying it, allowing it to change us. So it's no wonder that Jesus would refer, uh, or sorry, Jesus giving to the Apostle Paul, referring to the helmet as helmet of salvation to protect our mind from the salvation that he gives to us so we can believe rightly and live rightly. When I went for counseling, I, there's one church we went, ended our ministry at, and uh, I felt like God was leading me for counseling because there's some things I need to work through to be healed from. And my counselor, who was actually a professor I had in seminary, had talked about how in order to change how you feel, you have to change how you think. And I found that to be very true in my life. Again, that's why how we think is important. In order for us to act rightly, we need to believe rightly. So in order for us not to sin, yes, Christ saves us from our sin, but to choose not to sit anymore, we must believe rightly. So again, that's why we need the helmet of salvation. To save Jesus is salvation to save us from our sins so we can live rightly for him. So then again, where does salvation come from? There's three subpoints to this this morning. First, salvation belongs to God. Can you click the next slide, please, son? My remote's not working this morning. For some reason. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. Technology. <laughs> Salvation belongs to God. Psalm 3 verse 8 says, Salvation belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. But it's something that he gives to us. A gift offered freely. Next, Salvation B is the power of God. Salvation is the power of God. Romans 1 verse 16 tells us, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So salvation is the power of God to save us from our sins. See, salvation comes from Jesus. It comes from no other source. It comes from Jesus only. Some like to say that, oh, I can, be, I can save myself. Uh, there's some who even teach in some churches that you can save yourself by doing works or being, by being good. And there's other religions that teach, this, teach that. And it's not true. Because salvation comes from Jesus. It is a gift offered for you to us. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8 through 10 says, But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Through who again? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. So salvation comes from Jesus. And lastly, D, salvation is assured. I'm sorry, we're having troubles here this morning. Salvation is assured. Romans 10, verse 13 says, Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Not if you call on the name of the Lord, you might be saved, or it's possible you'll be saved. No, if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. So when a person comes to Jesus Christ and says, Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that I can't pay for my sins on my own, but you pay the debt for me. When they continue that thought and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And from this moment on, I choose to live my life for you. I surrender my life to you. Jesus tells us here that our salvation then is assured. Remember as a child hearing stories of other people who would say the sinner's prayer, but they would do it several times because they didn't feel like they were saved. And it wasn't until after the eighth time they prayed they felt like they were saved. But again, it comes back to the helmet of salvation, right? God protecting our mind and knowing the truth that we are saved when we confess our sins and place our faith in Him. It's not an if. It's an assured thing that we are saved from our sins. That's why, again, it's important to know truth. As we've talked about this morning already, to know the truth of God's Word and what He says about salvation so that we can believe rightly. We are told in God's Word that we are to keep on the helmet of salvation. That is part of the armor that God has given us in the spiritual fight. We are always in a spiritual fight. But it's not something we should be afraid of, though. Sometimes when we hear spiritual warfare, we, we think of the worst things, don't we? We think of clashing with demons and expelling demons, and that is sometimes part of spiritual warfare, but that's not the whole of spiritual warfare. Living our daily faith is spiritual warfare. Every time we're tempted and we overcome that temptation by obeying God, that's spiritual warfare. Every time we pray, every time we share the gospel, every time we do something spiritual, it's spiritual warfare. Because we're battling truth against lies. Again, that's why God has given us the helmet of salvation. To give us salvation, first of all, but also to protect our minds. I'm reminded of a movie called The Program. It used to be one of my favorite football movies. And in there, there's, there's this one man in college who wants to woo this girl, this girl he really likes. And, and she's interested in him too, but there's a concern because her father is a, is a well-known doctor in the, in the city and also has high standard for his daughter of who she should marry, which is good in, in, to an extent, right? All fathers should have a good standard for their daughters, for the man who will marry their daughters. The young man had a conversation with this girl's father one day and, and the father said, you know, it's, it's good that you're in college and, and it's good that you're playing football, but you know what? I came to, to college to get an education and I always put up my test scores in the inline of my helmet to remind me that I'm not here for football, I'm here for an education, to fill my head with knowledge. That character, that boy, took that to heart. And at the end of the movie, or close to the end of the movie, in the last football game, he pulls off his helmet, kneeling before this girl he likes, and his, her father's there too, and pulls off his helmet and pulls out his test score and shows the father the A-plus on his paper. May we be reminded in that way too that God has given us salvation and to fill our minds with the knowledge of his word so we're filled rightly 
with the right knowledge so we will believe rightly too. Here's a challenge for us this morning. Two parts to this. Put on the helmet of salvation by receiving the gift of salvation. If you're not a Christian yet, then I encourage you to do this. To come to Jesus. Place your faith in Him. Confess your sins. Make Him Lord of your life. The second challenge is for us as Christians, keep on the helmet of salvation. Spend time in God's Word daily, reading it, studying it, meditating upon it. Allow God's Word to sink into your heart and your mind. Allow His Word to change you so you don't walk away from your salvation. I mentioned this some time ago. I, Sharon and I were driving one time home, and we were listening to, to a, ba- a Christian band. And I said to my wife, the lead singer of this band has recently walked away from the faith. He said he's decided to leave Christianity and not be a Christian anymore because he started to disbelieve about God's existence and has become an atheist. And I said to my wife, I said, I wonder if he stopped reading his wor- the Bible and, sp- stopped, spent, and didn't spend time in his word or in prayer. If we don't spend time with God... Our relationship with God will wean. We will have doubts. And even as Christians, sometimes we have doubts, but we always remind of the truth because of studying God's word. So for us as Christians, keep on the helmet of salvation. Spend time again in his word daily, reading it, studying it, meditating upon it. Spending time in God in prayer and, yes, sharing our request to him, but also in our prayer, spending time in adoration and praise to the Lord. And, and like Keith pray this morning too. Lord, how can we pray to you or for you? And part of that is listening to his voice too. If you keep the helmet of salvation on, you will have an eternity in heaven with God. You don't have to face hell or eternity in there. But you know you have the assurance that you have an eternity with Jesus in heaven. We don't need to fear death then. Because death is brings us to an eternity with him in heaven. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, keep the helmet of salvation on. And if you're a person who has not received Christ, I encourage you to talk with me after this morning's service too. If you're watching with us online too and have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, but recognize that you need to be saved from your sins, I invite you that after this morning's service to phone our, our church line. The phone number is 780 660 Four one five three, and I would love to talk with you later to talk more about how to receive Christ's gift of salvation, and then also to encourage you in your newfound faith. Again, that phone number is seven eight zero six six zero four one five three. Lord God, we thank you for this time we've had now to study your Word, for your truth. Lord God, may we as Christians continue to remember to get the salvation you've given us and to live like we were saved because we are. Lord, pray for those too, Lord, who have heard this message this morning and recognize that they needed Jesus to save them. Lord, may this be the moment of salvation for them. Lord, in this moment now, Lord, may they even turn to you and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I recognize that I'm a sinner and need of saving of my sins. I cannot achieve it on my own, but you've achieved that for me by dying on the cross for me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying and for raising from the dead and offering me your gift of salvation. I confess my sins to you and I surrender my life to you from now and forever. Lord Jesus, thank you that you save us from our sins. These things are printed in your name, Lord Jesus.